Hey everyone, Troy Peterson, Mr. Bluegill. And before we get started on our demonstration video on how to put together your new Flipmo shelter, everyone at Eskimo wants to thank you for your purchase. Now, let's get started. All right, now the first thing you're gonna wanna do is unpack everything. Uh, what I have in front of me is the tracking kit, and then behind me I have the sled base with all the components and then the poles leaning up against the door behind me. A Couple of tools that you're gonna need. It's gonna be nice to have a couple of 7 16 wrenches, a uh, good little screwdriver, a cordless drill, and what I like to do is have a 7 16 nut driver just for making the process go a little bit faster. Now, first thing I want to tell you guys is do not tighten bolts until everything is put in. Uh, what will happen is you might get something that's out of line and you're going to have to go back, loosen it. So basically finger tighten everything and then once everything's together, we'll go back and we'll tighten everything down. One of the things that I always do to protect my investment is install a runner kit on the bottom of my sleds. This will make sure that you don't burn any holes in the bottom, uh, protecting it for as long as you possibly can own it. A couple of tools you're gonna need. Propane torch it will help you bend the high fax here. Once we get started, you'll see that. A 3 16 drill bit and a 3 8 wrench and then a screwdriver. All right, the first thing you wanna do is take your high fax and you're gonna wanna set this on the top or the front lip of the sled and you want to make sure that it's lined up with the ribs. You're going to have two on the ends and one on the center. So we're going to line this up. They're pretty close. Take our 3 16 drill bit and drill a hole. All right. Now, this is where it's going to be nice to have that extra person. We're going to take our screw, insert that into the hole. We'll tighten this one down and then we'll bend it over and keep going. Now as you tighten this, you want to make sure that you don't over tighten your screw because what will happen is it will actually deform the plastic. And we can always come back later and snug them back up. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Now, if you don't have a torch, what you can do is you can bend this over, drill your hole and continue on down the line. But it's really nice to have the torch heat up the plastic. It'll help it fit the contour of the sled a little bit better. And be careful that you don't burn a hole in your sled. There. Now we can go ahead, make sure everything's still lined up, drill our hole. We'll insert a screw there. Now the lock nut and the washer go on the back side. Okay, now that you have your contour, basically just line up your high fax on top of the rib of the sled, work your way down, tighten everything up, and do that for the next two, and then the high fax will be on. Now that we got our high fax runner kits installed on the bottom of the sled, we can flip it over and actually start installing the rest of the components to make up the main shack. First thing I want to do is take all the parts out of the box, lay everything out, get everything in place, and it'll make installing everything a whole lot easier and it'll go a lot quicker for you. Um, as you can see, I've laid out all my bolts, nuts, washers. Uh, I've got my 2 7 wrench, and I've got all the pieces that make up the shack 
pretty much set into place, ready to go. Uh, what you're going to find, you're going to have quarter 20 bolts, you're going to have one inch and three quarter, and as we go through it, we'll explain where everything goes. We're ready to start assembling the main part of the shanty, and really, it's just a few components that go on per side. You're going to have your corner mounting plate that's already pre-drilled. We'll set that on the corner, and then you're going to have your riser. Your left and right riser are different, so you want to pay attention. Your left riser will have the bottom flange and the top flange. You're going to want to take the smaller flange with the two holes, face that forward, and we'll set that on top as so. We've got our chair support bar that we'll install in a little bit, and then our main hinge assembly. Now with your main hinge assembly, here again you've got a left and a right. You want to keep the top part or the high side of the hinge assembly facing towards the front of the shanty with your poles facing towards the inside and then it'll be just the opposite on the right side. So let's get started and put this side together. First step is to take your quarter mounting bracket, set that on the sled, and we're going to take our left riser, remembering to keep our tab towards the front, gap towards the back, set that down. We'll take three quarter 20 by one inch bolts, place them through the pre-drilled holes, and that should stay in place to get the washers and the nuts started. And on the bottom side of the shack, you're just going to take three washers, three lock nuts, go up from the bottom, snug them up. Now remember, don't tighten them. Keep them somewhat loose so we can get everything all lined up. And then once everything is all installed, lined up, we can go back later and tighten everything down. All right, now that we have our corner mounting plate and our riser installed, we can continue by adding our hinge bracket. And what this is going to do is just add some extra support. Make sure that it lays flat on both surfaces. And for the bolt that goes into the corner mounting plate, you're going to want to take the bolt with a washer and put it in there. And then on the riser assembly, what you want to do is take your nut, or I'm sorry, your bolt, put it in from the back side your washer, and then your lock nut. Now the reason I did that is we don't want to put the bolt going through the other way. That'll just prevent any catching of the fabric as we flip the material up and down. All right, the last thing we're going to do before we put our hinge assembly on is install our chair bar and then put one more bolt in our corner plate. And those two bolts are going to be two short ones. You're going to put your bolts in from the top and then the washers and the lock nuts will come up from underneath. All right, the last thing we gotta do on this side is install our hinge assembly. And what you're gonna need there is just two bolts, the two short ones, and then two lock nuts. The two holes, we're just gonna line up with the pre-drilled holes on our riser. Put that one in, get a lock nut on the bottom side. All right, we've got this side assembled. Uh, it's, it's not fully tight, we wanna keep it loose until we get the other side all complete. Uh, we wanna make sure that our chair bar fits perfectly and then we'll come back and we'll tighten everything down. All right, left side's complete, we're gonna start the right side. It's an exact copy as we did. We're gonna take the corner plate, put that down, take our riser, making sure our short tab is up and facing forward and we'll install our bolts and move on to our hinge assembly. All right, we've got our corner plate, our riser. We're gonna put our corner bracket on. And here again, remember, we wanna take the bolt and go from the outside in so we don't scrape the fabric. And you're gonna to want to put the washer on the bolt and put that through and then the lock nut on the bottom. All right, to complete this side, we're gonna take and put our last bolt in on our corner plate, we're gonna put our bolt in on our chair bar and put the two bolts in up on the top for our hinge assembly. Now with your hinge assembly, you don't need to use the washers. All you're gonna do is put one bolt in each hole with a lock nut underneath. Now that we have everything pretty much assembled, everything's finger tight, we're gonna go back 
tighten everything up. It's all lined. All the bolts are in the right holes. And here's where it's going to be handy to have a couple different tools. Uh, what I've got is a cordless drill and a nut driver with a 716 uh, socket on the end. You can use just a regular ratchet in the socket and uh, you know basically anything that'll help you speed up the process. As you can see here, it'll be real quick for me. You're in the shadow. The next thing we have to do is install the poles. Now there's three poles that are going to be exactly the same with the handles facing in. And then there's going to be one that's going to have the handles facing out. Now the neat thing is, is that each pole is marked separately with a special number for a part number so you can tell that way as well. We're going to start first by putting the three back poles on. You simply just slide it on, you're going to press down the button, slide it over the top until it locks into place and we'll do that on the other side as well. All right, and we're just going to keep working our way towards the front. Okay, the last pole we have to assemble is going to be the pole that's going to lay on the ice. Now, you don't want to assemble it right away because what we have to do is actually run the pole through the skin. And we're going to lay the skin out here and show you how we do that now. Now what you can see here, I've actually laid out the skin material and the back of the shelter is actually up. And what that's going to allow us to do is once we get our front pole through the sleeves on the front of the shack, we'll be able to pick this up, pull it over the top and continue with the installation of the skin. All right, now we're going to install the bottom cross brace through the tent. And what you're going to want to do is make sure that your QRS, the tab, is up. And we're going to start with our left pole going through the right side. And we'll slide it all the way through the bottom. And really, you just have to feed it through. Like so, we'll straighten everything out. And now as you can see, I have my QRS tabs have to line up with the little push button on your pole. We'll slide those over the top. You'll feel them lock into place. Okay. Before we flip the skin over the top of the shelter, what I'm going to do is actually install our spreader poles. And what that's going to do is create a good solid framework so you're not in there fumbling around with the skin. Now that we have our spreader bars installed, you can see that the framework's pretty solid. And that's going to make draping the skin over the frame a lot easier. Once you have the skin draped over the framework, you can come back inside and you'll see on all the top poles, there's gonna be a Velcro tab. And very easy, you're just gonna take that tab, wrap it around the pole, cinch it tight, and we'll be good to go. All right, the final step to complete the setup of the Eskimo Flipmo Shack is to put the trim on. And what you're gonna to wanna to do here is take the trim, basically find the center just by putting both ends together, pulling it tight, finding the center. And what we're gonna do then is find the center of the shack, wrap the material. Now this is kind of an important part. You don't want to pull the material so tight that you lift the front, on, front end of the shack up. So what we're going to do is just kind of pull it, just snug it up, and then we're going to install our trim. Okay, now it doesn't matter which way you go, whether it be left or right. You're basically just going to keep the fabric tight Work yourself all the way around and then we'll come back and we'll put the screws in. 
Now when you get to the corner, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you go underneath the wind flap. And what this is here is just to protect the wind from getting in behind the shelter and it allows you to bank snow on it once you're out on the lake. So we're gonna lift this up and continue to wrap just on the red skin material. The last thing we have to do is install our screws inside the trim. And what I like to do is actually have a torch by me. And it helps the screw get started, kind of cauterizes the fabric, and uh, just makes it a little bit easier to put these screws in. I'll just take the screw, put it over the top of the torch for a couple seconds, get it warm, and then screw it in. Just like that. Now, you've only got a few screws, so just what I like to do is put one in the middle, put one on each end, and then evenly space them. And make sure you have one on each side of the corner too, because that's the one that usually likes to come off the most. Well, there you have it. We finished the setup of the Eskimo Flipmo series of shacks. What we're gonna do now is collapse everything down, show you how to stow everything, put the chairs in, and get it ready for transport. All right, one thing you just gotta keep in mind is that you wanna try and protect the skin as best as possible. What I like to do is just bring up all my poles and neatly tuck away all the fabric into itself before we start transporting the shack. All right, the last thing we gotta do here is install our chairs. As you can see, we've got two clips. Those will just snap right on our chair bar down at the bottom of the shack. And depending on the model, if you have the Flipmo 2 or the Flipmo 3, you can put all three in or do it to your liking for whatever configuration you want. Well, there you have it. We finished the setup of our Flipmo series shelter. If you have any questions, if you're missing any parts, please visit our website at www.getesquimo.com. Follow the links to the contact page. Give us a call. We'll be able to help you out. One of the customer service people will be glad to answer any questions you do have. If you're looking for other information, uh, there's some great videos. All of our other products will be online as well. I'm Troy Peterson, Mr. Bluegill, wishing all you guys the best of luck on the ice. And from everyone here at Eskimo, we want to thank you for your purchase again, and good luck on the water.